of Morning Skin, presented by Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. And Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Do business with someone you know. Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. And in transit edition here of Morning Scone, uh, trying something a little new. So typically, whenever we're at an in transit or a single um, sourced view here, like we are when we're in the car and I'm just using my phone, normally I go live on Facebook because Facebook has, um, by and large, the larger live audience, got a larger uh, Facebook following presently than, than YouTube. The show has been on Facebook longer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What I tried to do today, though, is I originated the stream here on YouTube and shared the YouTube link on the Facebook page. So hopefully the Facebook people see it and come join us here on YouTube because I don't have the option to do it the other way around. So uh, let's hope it all goes well. Say some good mornings here. We're at a red light. Chase James, Jason Duplantis, PTG Toasty, your fun say yod. What's up, Edward? Oh, good morning. Appreciate y'all for watching. Uh, taking Drew to school. Uh, final day before Christmas break for Drew. So he'll have tomorrow off and then all next week off for Christmas. Huh, Drew? We'll be back January the 3rd. So does he have two weeks off? Oh, Lord. He is going to be really confused why he is not going to the new St. Lillian. Okay, guys. So uh, do me a favor. Smash that like button. Um We'll chat while uh, we'll drive here to um, to the new St. Lillian. Actually, you know what I need to do? Hang on. I do need to put on Do Not Disturb. Okay. We're back. Um, so National Signing Day, the beginning of the early signing period, I should say. Yes, we are going to the new St. Lillian. Very good. The new St. Lillian. Um, so yesterday began the early signing period. LSU inks 13 signees. Um, the lot of good news. A lot of good news yesterday. A um, little bit of bad news too, but that's pretty much par for the course when you're talking about a... Um, two. Uh. What? Welcome to a... Good job, Drew. Nailed the sponsors to always, always plug the sponsors. They're the reason we get to do this. Um, okay, red light. Good. So I can say some more good mornings here while we're at a red light. Indiana Tiger. Look at that. Said, uh, nice sunroof. Thank you very much. This is the uh, panoramic sunroof inside of the Volkswagen Atlas. It really is gorgeous. Michael Thacker, what's going on? Uh, Alex what? Barnes, Jesse uh, Brown, Wendell two. Norman, Alex Day, Don hey. Clue out, uh, Randall Offrecht. Good morning. So, um, some of you probably heard my thoughts on AFR. Uh, we did Nightcap last night as well, so some of you might have heard my thoughts there. But I'll just give you a very quick overview of my opinion of LSU's day. Uh, for signing day. Uh, and then I'll get into the Elias Rick stuff. You might have seen last night. Rick's is headed to Bama. So I'll give you some thoughts on that. I did uh, chat with his mom, Shauna, yesterday. Again, some some of which I mentioned last night on Nightcap, but um, I understand some of you didn't see that. So uh, please forgive the shaky camera. We are driving. Uh, so LSU, 13 signees. I thought it was a great day. I, I am very much a believer when there's a coaching staff changeover that you are much more intently focused on quality over quantity. I've pointed out several times Les Miles in his first signing class back in 2005 signed 13 players, but nine of the 13 became starters. That included guys like Paralu, uh, Saran Black, who became your 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 anchor left tackle, Lyle Hitt, who was a starting offensive lineman on a national championship team, Derek Beckwith, who became starting linebacker on a championship team and was an all SEC linebacker. It's Hawkins who started for you, Raheem Alem. Uh, it was a he only signed 13, but 
He got 13 really good ones that became massively impactful players in the program. Um, Brian Kelly, when he was introduced, said point blank, you know, because we asked him in that press conference, are you going to recruit some of the kids who are Notre Dame commitments to try to get them to LSU? And he said, we're going to take care of home base first, meaning take care of Louisiana and recruit the kids that are already committed to LSU to make sure that they stay committed. And that's, you have to say mission accomplished. Um, Five-star quarterback Walker Howard. In a given year, we would be doing backflips if Walker Howard had committed yesterday. We'd be going bonkers. But he's been committed. Same with Will Campbell. Five-star left tackle could be a day one starter at left tackle. You know, the all the the you'll know, be moaning losing guys like like Cam Robinson or Greg Robinson. You know, great guys who, who were great five-star prospects from Louisiana who went out of state. But you get Will Campbell. Um, you get Emory Jones. Remember, last Monday, Emory Jones was on AFR. And, um, you know, I asked him point blank if he was signing on on, on the early signing period. He said, no, he's going to wait till, till February because he wanted to, to look around. Well, 48 hours later, Brian Kelly's at Catholic High. 24 hours after that, Emory Jones is announcing he's signing early. So you get him. I mean, they've been on Quincy Wiggins for two years. Massive defensive lineman. Now you get to pair him with Mason Smith. Awesome. Um, you know, you saw Jadarian Rim flip to Auburn, and you didn't sign Austin Osbury, but you offered Jordan Allen out of Lafayette Christian. He signs. LaTerrence Welsh signs. I love what LaTerrence Welsh posted on Twitter yesterday, if you missed it. Uh, Dwight McLaughlin, when Elias Ricks tweeted that he was going to Bama, McLaughlin quote tweeted Ricks and said, we could have been great together. And then LaTerrence Welsh went and quote tweeted Dwight McLaughlin and said, let's go be great together. Like basically forget about him. Let's go do it. And I loved it, man. Love the kid's attitude. I love, I love the fact that you got, uh, 10 of the 13 are Louisiana guys. You know, Demario Tolan is one who was on the fence you know, in Florida. He was a bake, a Blake Baker pull and Baker may not return. Ty G Hill, Kiff Med Nakar. Um, Looked like he was not going to be a part of this class. Frank Wilson got in there late, did work, got him back in the class. Um, you know what I mean? So I just, I love, bro, people, drivers, bro, swear to God. Anyway, um, when I look at the out-of-state kids, you got the the, the kicker, uh, Debert, you got Demario Tolan from Florida, and then, um, Mason Taylor, you know, Jason Taylor's son, the tight end out of Florida. You desperately needed a tight end, and you got one. Um, you know, with respect to Jack Mashburn and, and Jack Besh, who, who did their who did their best this past year, but you know, Jack Besh isn't a tight end. Six two two fifteen. You can't play tight end in the SEC. He's a receiver, but he was a receiver playing tight end. Um, and then Mashburn played quarterback in high school, and he was a walk on. And God bless him. I mean, he was a physical presence that they needed as an extra blocker to get that running game going, but. We have to understand also there's limitations there. So to get a guy as a son of a NFL, I don't know, did Jason Taylor go in the Hall of Fame or is he just a Hall of Fame finalist? I can't remember. But anyway, a, gr- a great former NFL player, you know, obviously great genetics. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. You would think football IQ, all that stuff is there. So love it. I love what they did with the ones they signed. And I'll continue to reiterate, not only did – to just sign 13 guys, but that's just the beginning. It's not like this was it because of the February signing day. And then also, of course, transfers. I'm not telling you they're going to get to 25 or over it, but they're going to add more players between now and signing in in February. You know, you've, they may add players today and tomorrow with, um, they were keeping an eye on Miles Frazier, the transfer offensive lineman from FIU, who's a freshman All-America. He could be a day one starter. Um, you know, we're fine about the kid up at Captain Shreve uh, here as well. You could add a couple of more prospects here in the next two days, uh, next 24 hours, really, I guess. Um, that could push up to 15. You know, and then when you look toward February, the guys who put off their, their announcement to February to give you a chance to, to flip them. Um, Jacoby Matthews, five-star safety out of Ponchatoula. I've told y'all before, I'm really confident LSU is going to offer and sign Braden Johnson. 
of the running back from Ponchatoula who's going to flip and play linebacker. Um, forgive me, I forget his name, but the wide receiver from Ponchatoula as well I think you're going to get. So a lot of reasons to like what they're doing with this class. Matt Plavidal, what's up? M. Bitter, what's up? Hunter Fournette out the boot. We got the nucleus of class taken care of. Amen. Uh, losing Preston Hurts, losing him to Bama Hurts even more. So there's, there's no doubt, man. Um, there's no doubt. You, you know, Shaz Preston, top wide receiver in Louisiana, goes to Bama. That hurts. There's no doubt. I mean, you can't. There's no denying that. Like, there's, there's no making yourself feel better about that. Uh, and if they leave the state, you hope, you sure as hell hope they don't stay in the SEC, especially not the SEC West, especially not Bama. But that happened, man. And look, you know, Jake Johnson committed to A&M, and we're expecting Max today to announce that he's going to A&M. Okay. Um, and then Elias Ricks uh, committed to Bama yesterday. So, okay. It's what it is, man. You know, Bama's good. They're going to get players, and, and Nick's always come and plucked a few here out of Louisiana. You know, the key for Brian Kelly is to make sure that that he's keeping the best players in state, and by and large, in a tough year, he did that. You got Will Campbell, got Walker Howard, uh, got Emory Jones, still has a chance to get Jacoby Matthews. Um, You got Quincy Wiggins, so you you did what you did by and large what you had to do. There's a couple you would have loved to have had, no doubt, but you did what you had to do. Um, talk about Ricks for a second because I know some of y'all want to know. By the way, uh, 126 watching live. Thank y'all so much. Uh, an abbreviated in transit edition of Morning Scone. Only 32 likes. Maybe we can smash that like button and get that up a little bit. Would really appreciate that. Um. So specifically with Ricks, I shared this last night at Nightcap. I'll share it again here. Uh, I did uh, chat a bit just briefly with uh, Shauna Ricks, Eli's mother, yesterday. Uh, Long story short, she came on AFR a few times when Elias was going through the recruiting process coming over from California, uh, all during COVID, et cetera. Um, Their family moved to Baton Rouge. Uh, Elias' dad... His grandfather is from Louisiana, from Shreveport, I believe. So they had some family roots here, and they they bought a house. His younger brother's in school here, and they're not they're not leaving Baton Rouge, um, uh, from what I understand. Um, but when when uh, when Elias had the the shoulder surgery, and there was all the conversation about was he opting out, et cetera, et cetera, she she called me and went on the record. So it's not like citing anonymous sources. The kid's mother went on the record and said, this is not an opt-out. He's not transferring, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then obviously he's transferring now. So she called me as a, as a courtesy to say, listen, I wasn't lying to you. Um, at the time, Coach O hadn't been fired yet and was fully planning on being here. Y'all get it. But, but I, I appreciate that respectfully that she called because honestly – I had that thought yesterday. I'm like, man, did she just straight lie to me? Um, but I've always been a a, uh, a stand-up person, a great family. So I respect I respect very much that she did call. Um, she's like, I want you to hear it from me before you know before you see it on social media, um, which I do respect. And the other thing. And I've told y'all before, a big part of Rick's leaving LSU is NIL. That, that's part of it, for sure. Uh, there's no question. And he was going to end up at Ohio State, but Ohio State was going to lose some of their current players if Rick's transferred in, so they decided not to pursue him. But there's no question NIL money is a part of this. There's no question. Um, the other part of it, even if – she wouldn't say it or they won't admit it or whatever. He will get NIL deals at Bama. Book it. Um, the other part of it, too, is she said they were looking for stability, which I do understand. And if you're being really honest with yourself as an LSU fan and you take a, you, you zoom out, take off the purple and gold glasses and take the 10,000-foot view, you can recognize how bad it's been at LSU the last two years and why 
you would seek a more stable situation, and Alabama is that, and there's no denying that. Uh, there were a lot of people last night at Nightcap who kept saying, why would you believe he's unstable, and you got a new coach here who's got a long-term contract, and Corey Raymond's not here, and Nick Saban is there, and it's Alabama, and they have been the beacon of consistency for 15 years. So, like, we don't need to scream and shout or be all up in our feelings about it. It's just the reality of it. That's Alabama, and there's a reason kids want to go there. They have a chance to win. Uh, they're going to be playing on a super talented team and a really strong defense, and it's going to put them in the best position to succeed and go on to the next level and all. And I get it. Like, at this point, if he stayed at LSU, wouldn't even know who his D.C. is. I think it's. I think people are less upset that Ricks is leaving, and more upset that he's going to Bam. And y'all know my feelings on it, man. Whether it's Elias Ricks or whether it's Joe Burrow coming to LSU or whether it's whoever else LSU is going to get in this transfer market, I am pro player. I am pro student athlete, very much, almost to an extreme. And not everybody agrees with me, and that's fine. I mean, you, you don't have to agree with me. like it's. It's just a, it's a subjective view of what we're looking at, but it's the reality of the situation that's been built where for decades, college football's hierarchy, the powers that be have built a billion dollar business on the backs of free labor. And you can tell me about getting an education and all that, and that's fine, but there's plenty of students that go to college that drop out or that get jobs or have opportunities before they finish their degree. And y'all never talk about that. It's because you're not emotional about the science department. You're emotional about the football program. So if a kid has an opportunity to better him or herself, then then I'm for it. I'm, just, I'm for it. Why can, why can Brian Kelly leave for $100 million, leave coaches, players, administrators, entire program like that? And there's no problem. But if a kid wants to go seek a situation that's better for him, we're going to hold an 18, 19, 20-year-old to a different standard. I just don't – That's I'm not down with that at all. So does it suck? Yes. Do I wish Elias Ricks was staying? Yes. If he was leaving, I wish he had gone somewhere far away? Absolutely. And I'm mad at him. I get it. Like, look at what, look at what Jamison Williams just did. Jamison Williams at Ohio State could have stayed there, could have been on a really good team instead. You, know, you got Chris Olave, you got good receivers there. He said, you know what? I'm going to go somewhere where I can be the, the man. Went, goes to Bama, catches passes from Bryce Young, who wins a Heisman. They're playing for it in the playoff now. Ohio State isn't. And he's probably going to be the re- first receiver taking the draft. I get it. Saban's got something to sell. So, I get it. Anyway, we are pulling up to the new St. Lillian right now. Are we in the carpool line, Drew? Huh? Hey, where are we? Hey, Drew, where are we? Very good. Who are we going to see today? Miss April. April. Miss Claudette. Claudette. Who else are you going to see today? Big yawn. Who else are we going to see? Skyler. And who else? Miss Diane. Very good. Brooks Durham said shout out to Drew. Thank you, Brooks. Trevor Riley, what's up? Pat Usman, what's up? Matt Plavidal, what's good? Well, <clears throat> shout out to Brock, y'all, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Locations all over the greater Baton Rouge area. Um, you need an orthopedic, you go to Brock, it's what you do. And also Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Would really, really sincerely appreciate it. Um, 152 watching, thank y'all so much. Um, would really sincerely appreciate it. You, family member, friend, neighbor, co-worker, if you know someone who's got a roof issue, uh, commercial or residential, you maybe uh, got a, a Father John David Mathern, who y'all see pop on here yesterday, said he was going to contact us about the church where he is. So uh, schools, church, whatever. Need a roof? Give us a shout. We'd love the opportunity to uh, to earn your business. Um, all different types of roofs. Hudcoroofing.com. Hudcoroofing.com. Hit that contact form right there. Would appreciate it greatly. Um, 
All right, let's see. Anything else we got? Ronnie Duga, Big Mac. What's up, Caleb Bernard? The, the new St. Lillian is a pretty good drive from us. It is, Caleb. Yeah, we're so uh, it's in the old Broadmoor Baptist um, daycare. So Broadmoor Baptist on Goodwood. Um, it's it's out here. So yeah, it's it's a good drive, man. It's a good good little ways for us. Um, but it's okay. It's actually closer to work for me too. So not bad. All right, where are we? Yeah. Oh, yes, we're at New St. Lily. I meant with the comments, but he took that literally. He's like, we're physically are. Yes, we're yeah. at the New St. Lily. Um, all right, y'all. Okay. AFR coming up at three. That could be just about a wrap for us yes. here. Appreciate y'all watching. Uh, smash that like button. Shout out to Brock and Hudco. Anything else? Randall Offer at Chances Booty says, yeah, if y'all got questions, fire away. Uh, well, I'm stopped here in carpool line. I can look. Um, Kayshawn, <clears throat> Kayshawn was asked, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he was on Jordy's show and was asked point blank where he's going to be for the spring. And um, he said LSU. So now does that mean he'll be here in the fall? I don't know. But the spring anyway he will be. Hang on. Let me try to see. Let's see who's going to come pick. Who's going to come see you? Hi, Miss. It's Miss Alyssa. Hi, Miss Oops. Alyssa. I'm doing morning scone. I'm All right. Fair warning. You're not on camera, though. Hey, Say good morning. Hey, from St. Lily and the Catherine. There's all, Erica's got all kind of gifts in there for everybody. Oh, so y'all got stuff wonderful. in there, too. So. Come on, big man. I love the red pants. Oh, oh yeah. Red. He's always decked out. Okay, bud. I love you. Love you, Drew. Okay, love Dad. Love you, Drew. Love you, Drew. Love you, Drew. Good enough. Thank you. Bye. See y'all. Make your heart melt. Just melt, melt right off, melt right off the bat. He's like, I for you, Daddy. He doesn't even look back at me. Y'all, he just gets he just gets out of that car and rolls, bro. He just out. They do so good here, man. This is such a great place. I'm uh, very proud to support St. Lillian um, and a lot of their their efforts. It's a it's, a, it's ten years old, and for families like ours, it's a godsend, man. I'm telling you, to have to have a place like that where you know. Where your, your kid can go and kind of have some uh, some normal life experience is pretty it's pretty great. So anyway, uh, where where are you going? What what are you doing? Old people driving, bro. Old people driving. I mean, I, I love old people. I do. Old people driving, bro. Whew. It's a challenge. Look at that. Pretty washed out there. Have you? So, <clears throat> excuse me, might be just about to wrap this up. Um, Randall said, why don't Banner's business people step up to the plate? Uh, talking about NIL there, obviously. So here's the, the tricky part. Um, so some have. Let's not get it twisted, man. Um, we've seen walk-ons do a lot of NIL deals. We've seen Smoothie King do NIL deals. Um, we've seen you know, clothiers and, uh, heck, GameCoin's done NIL deals, y'all. GameCoin's done NIL deals with Brennan and Jay Ward and Ty Davis, excuse me, Ty Davis Price and Jack Besh and Cam Lewis and reached out to tons of others initially. So some are, some are, um, Canes, yes. Absolutely. Um, you know, the bigger point I think that's, that needs to be considered is how do you get those deals done in recruiting? For example, Travis Hunter. You also Travis Hunter yesterday. Travis Hunter is the number one player in the class who had been committed to Florida State since March of 2020. For, for reference, that's when the pandemic began. He's been committed to Florida State since March of 2020. And... Um, Yesterday, signed with Jackson State. 
first five star ever to sign with an FCS school. Well, they got to deal with Barstool. Uh, you know, Dion has his deal with Barstool, and Barstool, the the scuttle is ponied up somewhere between one five and three million dollars. Okay. Um, just think of it from an advertising play, right? If you're Barstool, so why would Barstool do that? I'll walk you through this. When you pay attention to sports content now, it is impossible to avoid advertisement regarding what? Regarding what? Everywhere you go, you see ads about what on sports content? What do you see? Ads about what? Somebody posted. What are the most ads you see right now? Endlessly. During football games, radio shows, and you see ads about what? Somebody posted. Somebody posted. Jerry Lee, you're a good dude, man. Thank you. Thank you. Gambling. Thank you, Randall Offrecht. Yes, sports betting. Sports betting. Sports betting. The FanDuel. FanDuel, not alcohol, gambling. FanDuel, Caesar. We are all Caesars. How many times you heard that? You've heard us talk about DraftKings Sportsbook, DraftKings Sportsbook, FanDuel, all of them, endlessly, endlessly. MGM's got theirs coming out now, endless amounts of sports betting. So, oh God, I'm trying to get y'all not washed out there, but it's better if I hold, hold the camera with my right hand. Anyway, um, yes, so these, Pat McAfee, did you see it last week? Pat McAfee did a deal. This is quarterback money, y'all. Four-year deal with with uh, FanDuel for the Pat McAfee show. Four-year deal, $30 million per year. Dude got quarterback money. Pat McAfee, FanDuel, signed him to a $120 million contract over four years. Sportsbook ain't messing around, y'all. Right now, it is an attention grab. They want to get you into their funnel. So, the, the hope for FanDuel there is let's pay Pat McAfee all this money. Hopefully his audience goes to our sports book and gambles. That's that's what it's all about. That's like we've all endorsed DraftKings over the last four to six months. Why? DraftKings took a different approach. Instead of getting the macro influencer, they went for micro influencers. DraftKings went into every single media market in this country and bought up all of the, the micro-influencers. They went into every sports, radio sports station, in every market in this country that, that has a that has a pulse, and, and bought it all up because they're all trying to get you into the funnel. So Barstool has a sports book. Barstool got bought up by Penn Gaming. Of course, LaBears is owned by Penn. And so that's why that's going to be a Barstool sports book. And they're trying to get people into the Barstool Sportsbook funnel. So, you think, do you honestly think Penn Gaming, which bought Barstool for a half a billion dollars, is worried about paying a million three for, or however they structured that deal with Hunter for the amount of exposure and publicity that got? Bruh. Bruh. Now, they haven't announced that, but when they do, think about the, think about the exposure that got yesterday. And it's still getting. People... People talking about Jackson State. People talking about a recruit. No other recruit could have delivered that. It had to take a splash, getting the number one player, five star, to go to a swag school. Buying attention, man, to get to get people into their funnel. That's all it is, man. That's that's what that's about. Anyway, uh, just did the roundabout on Government Street. Proud of, I'm proud of Baton Rouge. They're learning that roundabout. Haven't had a problem at that roundabout in a long time. Not since it first was being built. When it was first being built, it was like people dropped into Mars. They're like, where am I? What is that thing? What do I do? I don't know. Rapping batches, what's up? Um, so anyway, we'll cruise down Government Street this morning, y'all. Uh, heading toward the Guarantee Building. Julia, good morning. Money talks. Oh, yeah, it does. So that all started because someone asked about why the Baton Rouge business is stepping up. Um, the other sort of conflict here is you got to consider this. Tiger Athletic Foundation. Uh, the LSU Foundation. LSU Alumni Association. All of these 
organizations are fundraising arms. All of them. How do you justify, if you're raising money for TAF, how do you go to the people that you're trying to raise money for TAF and say, well, why don't you give this money to players? One for players, one for TAF, right? I don't want for players, one for the LSU Foundation. I got a job, I'm a fundraiser, right? So that's the really tricky part, man, is, you know, how can you keep going to the well, the same well, golly, that is just washed out, sorry, I'll, I'll leave it over here. How do you keep going to the same well over and over again, asking for money for different things? Like someone just said, Rouse's, okay, Randall said Rouse's could step up. Sure, but Rouse's is a corporate sponsor of LSU Athletics. Rouse's, like I know, I know how much deals cost to be a corporate partner of LSU, the official whatever of LSU Athletics. I know because they try to poach all of my my sponsors. So I've had plenty of them come to me and say, "Hey, is this a good deal?" I'm like, "No, it's not." Yeah, they'll give you a, a they'll give you an ad in the program and a sign in Tiger Stadium. Anyway. But you get to be the official fill in the blank of it, whatever. Anyway, whatever. Um, whatever. So, but it's expensive. But the point is, if they're spending all that money to be the official such and such of of LSU athletics, how much more in their marketing budget do they have to give give to kids? And then the other tricky part is. Um, how do you know what to spend? It's another big part of influencer advertising. People don't realize like there, it's not a mature market. So influencers can ask for whatever they want. Now there's a general rule of thumb as a cost per thousand. It's like a 10, $10 cost per thousand, but not everybody stands by that. A lot of people ask for more. Some people don't know what to ask for. You end up getting less. Let's see. Michael Thacker, Matt, Dion denied any deals for the recruit on Keyshawn J. Will Max this morning. Of course he did. Of course he did. It's illegal to set up an NIL deal while the kid's still in, in high school. Of course he denied it. What do you think he's going to say? I broke the rules. Please come nail me, NCA. Come on, man. Of course he denied it. What do you think? Yes. I robbed the grocery store. <laughs> what? No. Of course he's going to deny it. You don't think they have a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, agreement of place? Come on, man. I'm not mad at you, Michael. I'm just making a point. Just emphasis, you know. Uh, Randall Napier's in a big hole starting year one. So isn't that another great uh, comparison where to speak to the job that Brian Kelly did keeping this class together? Um, and really the staff members that continue to recruit the players after Ed got fired, um, because, Kelly and Napier were in a similar boat and um, Florida's in a deep hole right now that, that they got to dig out. Now you got, you got time, but um, yeah, we'll see what they do between now and, and February. And they'll add, they'll add, uh, they'll add guys to the class, but you know what else? Well, I think we might've talked about this last night, nightcap too. It was like a two hour nightcap. Um, Matt is Walker Howard, the next boat next. I'll get to that in a second. Um, God, dog, what were we talking about? Oh, Napier, Florida. Oh, Dan Mullen. Goes to show you how bad of a recruiter Dan Mullen is. Good, really good play caller, really bad recruiter. I mean, whew. Anyway, is Walker Howard the next Bo Nix? No, um, a huge part of Bo Nix's game is running and his athleticism. That's not Walker Howard's game. Walker, if you watched him play at St. Thomas More, it's not that he can't run the football. That's just not part of what they did. He was a uh, – he's the field general slinging it all over the yard. Um, 
So no, that's that's not a good comp actually. Um, again, a guy that can run with a little athleticism, but not a guy that's looking to run. Bo Nix was always looking to run. Um, I'm excited about Walker. Good player, a talented, super mature prospect. You know, Jamie Jamie's done a great job with him, keeping him grounded and um, humble and being a you know, team first guy. So that was the thing that stood out most. Uh, Jamie was on the show a couple weeks ago when Brian Kelly was hired, and I, I had him asked him to come on because you know, he and Walker went up to Notre Dame uh, for the USC game. That was the only other visit Walker took. He wanted to know. So they were familiar with Brian Kelly, et cetera. Whatever. Um, and two things. One, Jamie t- said, look, if Walker n- never plays a, a down at LSU, they'll still be better because he's on the team. Because he, he's, a, he's a team guy. He's all, all that sort of stuff, which, which was great to hear. That's one. Um, and he also said, and he did say this on he said this on a for the second time. Whatever. He said, um, you know, being in at Notre Dame, the contrast from LSU and certainly LSU the past couple of seasons is you had more of a team concept. And I don't think he didn't say it with the intent of it being a slight or anything. It was just more like you don't hear about opt outs and you don't hear about guys clamoring for NIL and it's just, it's guys that want to go play and win together in the team concept. And that's the culture that they had built there. So I will be very interested to see if Brian Kelly is able to build that culture here, recruiting a different athlete. And what I mean by that is what we've talked about a lot. And that's, you know, at Notre Dame, you got to recruit, you're fishing in a, a smaller pond because you got to recruit guys that can get into Notre Dame and that ain't easy. And you got to, go recruit nationally and it's it's not easy um you know here you're recruiting dudes that don't have the same academic standard as notre dame obviously and that's not that's not a knock i graduated from lsu i did not i i was rejected twice by notre dame and i graduated from lsu so i'm i'm in that number um and you got guys that are that are looking to be out of school in three years and get to the nfl so um, can he create that same culture rec- with a different recruiting strategy? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, playing style, who would you compare Walker to? Um, I tell you, I'm also a little, I'm probably also a little influenced by his size because Walker's not a big kid. He's only like six one. So, Part of me wants to say Baker Mayfield, um, but I think Baker is a much more dynamic runner. Oh, my God, dude. Y'all got to see this guy. Hang on. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Just right there. Just in the middle of the freaking road. Look at that. Just in the middle of the road. Like, what are you doing? Like, what? What are you actually doing? Bro, the human race, it's just... When did people become so dumb and inconsiderate? I just don't... Me first mentality, bro. Unbelievable. I'll just sit here in the middle of the street so I don't miss that line. I'm going to block the road so nobody else can pass. But I don't want to miss this light. Idiots, bro. Y'all be smart. Be smart and be good to people. Just be good people. Be good, considerate humans. Ain't that hard. All right, we're at the Guarantee Building. I'm at work. That's my morning commute. Y'all got to see it. Um, thank you so much for being here for Morning Scone, presented by Brock, Banners Orthopedic Clinic, Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com, 165 watching. Can we get over 100 likes? We're at 76 likes. I need uh, 24 more likes. Uh, if you would, take just a quick second, smash that like button. That's the thumbs up. If you're on mobile, X out of the live chat. Like go into into portrait instead of landscape, X out of the live chat. You'll see the little thumb up, and then just hit the thumb up, and then you can hit live chat again. We'll come right back there. 79, 81, almost there. I kind of just want to stay here to see until we get to 100. 
Okay, y'all, sincere thanks for watching. As always, have a uh, phenomenal day. Much love to everybody. Uh, AFR coming up later at 3. And, um, oh, 89. We're 11 away. 91. We're 9 away. Can we get 7? 93. 7 more likes. 7 more likes. 7 more. 7 more likes. Come on. Smash the like. Smash the like. Blaine, need a natural disaster on a global scale. Something too. Why? Oh, come on, Blaine. Don't say that. That's terrible. Oh, we lost a like. 94. I need six more likes. Y'all are making me beg. 95. We need five more likes. I just want to see it hit 100 before I leave. Uh, Hudco Roofing. HudcoRoofing.com. Y'all do me a solid. HudcoRoofing.com. Anybody, you, spread, help us spread the good word, man. Um, worked so hard on that, man, this year. It's been a, a great project. 97, 93 more likes. Uh, it's been so... 100. We hit it. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been very rewarding, man. Very, very rewarding to be able to help so many people, especially post Ida. I'm very proud of Terrio and Richard Tilly and Sam Hay and our crew over at Hudco, man. We're, we've had an amazing year one. I'm very grateful to everyone who has given us a chance. Um, so, okay, we're out. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs>